Hey, got uh, got my coffee, got my dog. We're good to go. Her little ears perked up when she heard me mention her. Yep, talking about you. <laughs> anyway, pray for me. I'm um, hoping to talk about some things that are on my heart in terms of um, applying the Bible to today and the times we're living in and um, just trusting that the Lord's leading me to um, a deeper knowledge of him that can only be found in his word. And I'm not trying to be cryptic here. I just, it's not something I can, I'm ready to talk about yet. I want to really know what I'm, what I'm talking about when I get around to it. Um, so I want to continue what we were discussing with Galatians. Now this is pretty interesting and often overlooked. Okay. So this is in, um, Chapter 2, we're just going to read the first five verses. It says, Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up because of a revelation and set before them, though privately before those who seemed influential, the gospel that I proclaim among the Gentiles, in order to make sure I was not running or had not run in vain. So here he was listening to God's voice. I think that it's uh, just wisdom that says, hey, there are others who, who know this gospel and I need to coordinate with them, okay? And so he must have got a directive from God to do so, okay? So he, he received a revelation about the gospel and then he received a revelation to go and meet with the others who were preaching the same gospel. All right. And so, although, and it, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but there's a lot of exciting things to talk about. It says, but even Titus, who was with me, was not forced to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. Yet because of false brothers secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy our, our freedom that we have in Christ Jesus, so that they might bring us into slavery. Now, five. To them, we did not yield in submission, even for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. Paul sees this as a fight. He, uh, he sees this as a battle almost, you know, where it's he has to keep this preserved. And if they fall into the slavery... I'm assuming the old laws that his mission to these Galatians would be sacrificed. So it's so interesting. He's being very consistent with all of you in all of his epistles. He loves these people. And this isn't about himself. This is about his mission to the Galatians. And so they oppose these people and um, directly for the purposes of preserving the gospel for these Galatians. Now I'm going to go back and read verse 6 for you of chapter 1. It says this, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. So you see the juxtaposition here. Paul is saying, we, we fought the battle. We preserved the gospel. We opposed the enemy. We didn't yield submission for a moment for you. And then if you go back and look at what he's saying, he's, he's shocked that they wouldn't put up the same fight. They wouldn't put up the same fight. And that that speaks volumes about his about his heart but it speaks even more about what god was doing and how far god was willing to go um for the galatians and how far he's was willing to go for us